addition to our success story showcase, and that's Delbert Wildpass from Project Reconciliation. Oh, there you are. So come on up. Delbert is also going to be on our panel immediately following this. As the um, former chief, I was told at one time I ran for provincial politics um, for the FSIN. And your speaker, your nominator, you have a combined time on the nominator, left me a minute and 30 seconds to sell myself to get elected. That was more time than I needed. Delbert Wapas and Siga Sam Kaftago Nago Te O Takes a Soget One Nanaska Malki Tim No Takai Speaks Fatago Minogamaga Nago Takap Maya Minakakio Unigano Our Senators Mino Takap Maptic Nanaska Malk Eganato Maka Pai Te Make Wagamagantic Niagasi Mun Chike Mami Ten Points to Makne Hion Maganista, ne te kiwe to kaman big stone, chige mano kame vanimus kame gami ki big star mouth. I want to say good afternoon to each and every one of you. I want to acknowledge as well the traditional territory of the Squamish, the Musqueam, and Slavertooth. I wanted to speak in my language in honor of my grandparents. I was brought up. I was raised by them, and I was raised in a traditional ceremonial environment, and I was, I'm an elders helper back home in our ceremonies. And it's important to acknowledge the territory that we're in, and where it's important to acknowledge our elders who are here, our leadership who are here, and each and every one of you who are here. This is a big topic big subject that we are talking about, which is UNDRIP. What does it mean? What does it mean to our children back home? What does it mean for our families back home? How do we get them to understand what UNDRIP is in a modern sense? When we have people that are being buried left, right, and center, being brought home in boxes from our urban centers, that are passing away through suicide, it being an epidemic in our communities, both on and off. What does it mean when our parents are busy trying to hunt for food, going around begging for food, going to food banks, trying to feed our children, and not having the time to teach them their language? I'm an educator by trade. I've taught for a few years. And my heart is always with the children. And for 20 plus years, I was a chief of my community and a regional chief for Saskatchewan. In 1879, we signed treaty in Alberta. And we were displaced and moved by government to Saskatchewan, not by choice, to a place called Delmas. Then again in 1908, government moved us and displaced us from Delmas, Saskatchewan to Musimin, which is by Koshin, close to North Balfour. So when we talk about reconciliation and we talk about what does UNDRIP mean, we first have to understand what does it mean amongst ourselves. Because of the lateral violence that goes on within our communities, we can't, we fail or we fall short of recognizing and reconciling amongst ourselves and reconciling within ourselves because of the treatment and what we've gone through as individuals. So when we look at economic prosperity and we look at the economic opportunities that are out there, if we're not going to find the means 
for wellness within our community. The money that we raise in our communities is basically giving a bullet to that individual to do something to themselves because we don't have the means and we didn't start the wellness process. You need money to do that. Project Reconciliation is a company I, I founded. And I looked as a former chief in my community, right across Canada, 633 First Nations. I sat on chief's committees at the Assembly of First Nations. I sat on chief's committees in Saskatchewan. I've been involved in the Alberta politics, British Columbia politics. I was a senior health policy analyst here for Na former National Chief Sean Atlio at the BCAFN. Spent eight months here. Really appreciated and enjoyed my time here. But one thing that I learned, we need to change the economic reality within our communities. And the only way we can do that is to make money. So we're here today to share information about project reconciliation and how the purchase of a majority interest in Trans Mountain Pipeline by Indigenous Canadians can form the basis of under principles going forward. And through the story, it talks about prosperity, environmental stewardship, and reconciliation. Under principles, acceptance of our birthright, we are meant to, to thrive and to prosper from our traditional lands. We have, been of the, we have been of the land and water since time immemorial, and we continue, continue to be so. Day in and day out, we worship Mother Earth and its creation and her creation. It's in our ceremonies. We have sun dances, we have sweat ceremonies, we have horse dances, all kinds of ceremonies. Not only in Saskatchewan, happens in Alberta, happens everywhere. And it talks about our relationship to water, talks about our relationship to animals, and so on and so forth. And how we're to conduct ourselves accordingly. It is natural that we benefit from the abundance that the land and water of us provides. Provides us. And as we're working through the purchase and having the majority ownership, we also acknowledge the fact that we want to create what is called a Sovereign Wealth Fund. And a Sovereign Wealth Fund, we believe, will make an upwards of $170 million, which then allows us to get involved into infrastructure opportunities or P3 opportunities that will create the kind of monies that we need for our communities to continue growing. Because government does not look at broke Indians. If you have money in your account, you have power, you have authority, and government will have no choice but to listen to you. Back at home, in one of our treaty documents, it says, learn the cunning of the white man. And that's as cunning as I can get on behalf of our people. Thank you. For the major projects coalition, you mentioned that there are 63 plus First Nations across the country in five provinces. Can you define a major project? Uh, if so First Nations in the room want to engage and join major projects, what, what's the threshold? We have got a, a, a variety of, of criteria that, from an Indigenous world, we define a major project, in addition to kind of what government views as certain projects that hit certain thresholds, such as uh, projects over $100 million. Um, yes, and so we haven't specified exactly what sector or industry type, but it's, it's based on um, if there's more than one First Nation involved, um, geographic location, uh, value capital of the value of the project itself. So we don't have a specific definition, but I would say projects that are worth over hundred million dollars. And can you answer the projects that are coming forth uh, 
from first nations. And I think you mentioned some of them already, a few of them. You mentioned one on the uh, power generation in central British Columbia. But can you mention one or two of the other projects in other parts of the country that have come forward? Uh, yes, there's um, an example in Winnipeg where uh, we've been approached by our members in Winnipeg to assist them in seeking an all, all year round uh, road access to these isolated communities so that uh, they can also get transmission lines connected to these communities so they can get them off diesel and they don't need winter roads just in the winter, um, as well as a uh, transmission line project out in Ontario, which we've been asked to, to support the feasibility study to see what the, the opportunity there may be. And Delbert, I have a question for you. We presented earlier about uh, the details on project reconciliation, which does fit into a major project by all definition. It's over $100 million dollars in multiple First Nations. It's an infrastructure project. A lot of the uh, issues that have come up around project reconciliation around the pipeline have come up on environmental concerns. There are questions from First Nations at times what extra would indigenous ownership of an oil pipeline entail on the environmental side? Can you speak to how project reconciliation would go beyond what Kimberly Morgan is proposing? Sure. Uh, excellent question. Uh, before I answer that question, I just want to qualify which then leads into this question, uh, into answering this, is that when I talk about majority ownership, 70% of that ownership will be uh, British Columbia based. You know, those 70 First Nations, 70% uh, of that ownership will be, you know, among uh, the BC First Nations, you know, so I think that's significant, um, you know, but in acknowledging that and, and recognizing that, uh, when we talk about environment, um, Project Reconciliation endorses the Marine Environmental Response Program. Uh, we were made aware that there was um, a package, uh, a report or a proposal that was put together, a study, and, and we, um, we support that this program would enable First Nations to participate directly in the monitoring and protection of their traditional waters. Uh, also, that uh, project reconciliation uh, would also consider looking at a third party independent monitoring to ensure the project is built to the standards that we all believe should be done without question. Even though we know that Canada has the highest environmental standards, still as Indigenous peoples, we still have our questions and we, and, and we're, you know, we want to be certain, you know, that, um, that the standards or how we think things should be done, you know, are, are done to that level. Project Reconciliation acknowledges we must protect the land to ensure it continues to provide for us. All in all, at the end of the day, if we take care of the land, the land will take care of us. And we hear, we hear that often um, you know, in many forms. So that be my answer to you, Mark. I am watching the time. Thank you both for your information presentation, and we are going to move to our close. Thank you very much. They will be available for more questions um, for either project reconciliation or the major project coalition. Oh, save the date, February 26 to 27. It's Indigenous project participation, major projects. There will be a conference on this in Calgary, coordinated between by the Indian Resource Council of Alberta, the major projects coalition. Columbia in Calgary. So that is on ircanada.ca.